Oh, that's good. I think the Latin, correct me, Passiflora, is that right? Incarnata. Yep. Like that. Cool. Downward. No, no debating this one. <laughs> Everyone throughout all of history, every culture is uh, all the same. Are we ready? Okay. So passion flower, um, we use the aerial portions. This is a actual somewhat native to this area, or it will grow here at least, but it's kind of finicky to start it from seed. This is a vine, a vine-like herb. And it has beautiful flowers. In fact, I'll pull up a picture of the flower. It is one of the prettiest flowers that there is. Sometimes it's called Maypop. Uh, uh, this flower is, it is wild. If I can get my computer to not do the thing that it does. <laughs> okay, this is the passion flower. It is beautiful. So it's really very, very, very beautiful. Very, very cool. It was one of the prettiest flowers that there really is. It's very dramatic. So it's, I don't know if it's native to America, but it's definitely native to South America. So it originally learned about it through... Um, when the Spanish started traveling around the world, they brought it back to Spain from, I believe, the Aztecs. But I, I think it is native to parts of America because it's in a lot of uh, Native Americans' traditional would be one of the herbs they would have. I know it's used a lot by like the Cherokee historically and it grows in, I know, southern climates better. So passion flower is one of the classic nervines. Just a classic, pure as pure could be nerve herb. And what's really nice about it is it's very gentle. You can grow this, um, but it actually makes a fruit that is called passion fruit. Um, it doesn't get very big, but you can eat them. They're like, so so i don't think they're like delicious um let me pull this up here so you can grow this it's a beautiful in in nebraska it makes like a vine that takes over trellises and stuff it's really pretty but i don't think it overwinters very well we'd have to ask shay about that or other people um but it's very definitively cool it's directionality is downward. No doubt about it. This is a grounding, calming, pure nerve herb. It almost doesn't have a lot of other properties. Like a lot of plants will have all kinds of other properties. Um, we know a little bit about its chemistry, but honestly, it's not super definitive on all the parts of it as far as like what's most active. So we've got like a couple of different compounds in it. We have some flavonoids. Like vitexin and isovitexin. But we have these really cool, in my opinion, probably where most of the properties come from are these really fascinating alkaloid compounds, um, especially harmon and harmine.
So these are, they don't occur in very high amounts in the plant. Why is harmine, why is that a cool, why is that a cool thing? Harmal. No, it, um, Remember the old World War I movies where they had the truth serum that was used in the war with prisoners that allegedly they would inject this? Mm -hmm. Allegedly. I don't know if this is totally true, but a lot of sources talk about this. Harmine is actually the truth serum drug that they made. Now, Passion flower doesn't have any historical use for like making people truthful or things, but it 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 does allegedly have this weird history. The compound, I have no idea how they made the drug. I have no idea how effective it was. It was never like an approved drug. It was more of like a war time drug. So I don't know much about it, but it's always fascinated me. But these harmon, harmine, harmal, these com these alkaloids are, in my opinion, probably where the calming effects are coming from. So I believe the flavonoids, you know, when we're talking about these compounds, not a lot, right? Talking about probably like 2.5% of the whole plant by weight. Alkaloids, you know, probably only about 1%. So... Like a lot of plants, there's all kinds of other, there's always like anti-inflammatory, like there's quercetin and other, you know, anti-allergy, anti-inflammatory comp, but that, those kind of occur in all plants almost. It's not uncommon. Um, but it's probably why when people take some herbs, they just get other benefits, like feeling, you know, less inflammation after they take them for a long period of time. It's just common with plants, right? So it's just kind of neutral. It's not really, it's not moistening, but it's also not drying. You can tell by its mouthfeel, right? It's just kind of neutral. Pleasant tea. It's a tea that's strong enough that I've actually oddly had like a couple clients even the last two days that who were didn't really know a lot about herbal medicine. They were first time clients that came this week and just talked about how they use passion flower tea to like treat their insomnia and anxiety and it works really well. What else do you got? You know? <laughs> so um, it just works really well. Any way you want to give it, it works. Works great as a tea. Um, as you can tell, it doesn't taste bad. Um, it works great as a tincture from the fresh plant or the dried plant. So here we're usually, ideally, we're going to have this tinctured when it's in its flowering state. Typically, we like to tincture a lot of flowers or, or harvest plants when they're in the flowering stage. Because remember, the flower represents like an... The doctrine of signatures, the highest expression of the plant, the part that's reaching up towards the sky or the heavens. So we want those components in the in the product. So sometimes when we buy it, we really don't know how much flour is in it and how much leaf or if there's any flour. Most companies will just say the aerial parts. So it's hard to tell. Like sometimes with you know, linden flower, you can pick apart the dried herb and tell how much flour is in there. But this one, it's a little harder. So I honestly don't know commercial companies how much is in there. But the flower to me is like is the best, most medicinal part of the plant. Okay, it also has GABA in it, which is like a common medication, right? Neurotransmitter that's functions a lot with anxiety and nerve and pain receptors. Okay. So really we're going to use this for everything for the nervous system. So no. anxiety. Um, where passion flower is really specific is it is for people who 
think too much. Your brain won't shut off, right? Your brain's really active, and then you lay down at night, and your brain gets even more active. And you're, it's very good for people who think in loops, like repeat, repetitive thoughts. This is why it's one of our main herbs for things like o, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorders. It's one of, one of our main herbs for all addictions. Any kind of addiction there is, from food to drugs to recreational drugs to sex, whatever it is, any addiction, this is a great, great herb for. Um, and we also use it for just all types of anxiety. It does not, this is why it's so important too, it does not interact with anti-anxiety medications. It does not interact with sleeping pills. And it does not interact with antidepressants. What's really nice about this is we can give it to about anybody with some of these medications that are often reactive. So going to use it for any kind of anxiety, but especially worry, obsessive thinking. One of our great ADD and ADHD herbs. This herb is completely safe for children, adults, elderly. It's very mild. It's very well tolerated. I don't think I've ever had anybody have a bad reaction to it my whole career. It's also very um, cheap. It's not like an expensive plant or supplement. Um, like I said, it works good as a capsule. It works good as a tincture. Works good as a tea, but probably the tincture made from the fresh plants, my favorite. But they all work pretty good. Okay. Um, we're also going to use this for insomnia. Both types of insomnia. So what we call regular insomnia, where you can't fall asleep, you stay there, and eventually you fall asleep hours later. But this is a very specific, the most specific herb for what we call sleep latency, which is for people who fall asleep just fine, but then they wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep. That's called, you, yeah, or just something with the nervous system. So we call this sleep latency. And this herb is really, really specific for it. And again, this could be children that have insomnia, anxiety, stress. It's a great panic attack herb. Why it's also really good for panic attacks is that it does relax tension in the chest and heart. Because a lot of times when people have panic attacks, they get heart palpitations. So passion flower is also very good for heart palpitations, rapid heartbeat, people who get stressed and anxious and their heart rate goes up rapidly. Uh, I was at a client today who came in for OCD, but his OCD is his heart. Like if he gets anxious at all, his heart starts elevating in rate. And then he starts to have extreme OCD about if he's having a heart attack or dying. So um, he's been tested by cardiologists to the point where they won't even talk to him anymore. Um, so his, his heart is physically fine, just like a anxiety, panic attack, OCD cycle. So he has passion flower. And a lot of times when people come to us with like severe panic attacks, something strange happens that as practitioners, you just have to accept. When someone's in like a really high anxiety panic attack state and you, they tend to, first of all, obsess about what you give them. They tend to overthink it, over Google it, overstudy it. That's just part of like the panic attack profile. So we have to keep this in mind. So we talked about it. We kind of explained it to him. He said, yes, that's what I do usually. I get prescribed something and I just stare at it for like a week and go to every book, every reference I can find and I talk myself out of it. Um, so for him, we just did Passion Flower and like Linden Key, Linden Flower Tea and just Passion Flower. Um, so... 
when people have severe anxiety, they also surprisingly don't like to feel too calm right away. That may sound strange. But when people have panic attacks and anxiety and you give them something too strong, often they'll feel uncomfortable because it's different, right? You go from feeling one way to a different. And when people feel different, they get uncomfortable, triggers them. So we talked about that because that's something that happens that people will inevitably call with. I don't like how this is making me feel, but what do you mean? Like I feel too calm, like something's slowing down. So especially really productive people, we have to remind them that you will feel calmer, but you will be more productive because your brain will be more focused. You'll be more efficient, right? You'll be able to better use your time. We got to like really enforce that idea to people. Okay. Um, he's also trying to wean off of benzos, the sleeping, addictive, addictive sleeping pills. Um, what everybody should know too is that some people just have a really sensitive constitution, right? And we talked about this again and again. So no matter what, like a lot of medical doctors say, you know, they'll try to have people just cold turkey benzos or cut them in half for like a week or two and then go off. But like for some people that is impossible. Like some people, it could take a year to go off of benzos or more. And they can completely affect people's lives, even though they're not considered, you know, super addictive. And, you know, psychiatrists and doctors will tell the person, well, you can't be having that withdrawal. That's not withdrawal. It's not possible. But I mean, it is. So people can get really addictive to benzodiazepines like the sleeping pills, you're addicted to anything, but that one in particular. So um, it can really kind of affect people's lives. So this is one of the herbs that we do because what's nice about passion flower is if somebody has to take their sleeping pill, they can't. It's not going to interact. Or kava would be like really strong and kind of too much. And this also will not, he also has Xanax for anxiety, like an anxiety medication that he only does if he feels like he's getting out of control. So we'll give him passion flower. You don't have to worry about it. It doesn't interact. So it's safe. So. Would it make you sleepy during the day? Not usually. I mean, you're going to feel calm. There's really not a lot of herbs that are truly sedative like drugs. I mean, if you get the right plant, I mean, you could feel your nervous system, but it, it won't do that like every time you take it or something. So it's very rare for plants to really sedate people at all. So, um, you know, on a scale of one to 10 of intensity, as far as plants are concerned, Passion flower is probably like a good six, maybe seven on intensity scale. So it's pretty strong. Almost everybody gets some kind of benefit from it for anxiety. Uh, we also use things like this ahead of the last client of the day was a doctor who was burnout, who was medical burnout. You know, he's going to have to retire because he's really burnt out and his nervous system is fried. So we use a lot of these nerve lines for people who are basically nervous, exhausted, and truly burnt out, right? Because when you're burnt out, your nervous system is fried, your adrenals are fried. So any little stress amplifies people dramatically. So we, this is how we get people out of that cycle. It can take a while, but we use gentle things like nerve vines, right? Okay. What was the dose for so normal dose, so one cup of tea twice a day, same dose we talked about, two capsules three times a day, maybe four times a day, um, 30 or 60 drops of a tincture three or four times a day. Sometimes we do smaller doses, like 10 drops every hour. I mean, some people... We'll do that for like a day or two to kind of reset. 
think you see it might see plants perform better as a collective, like long term, like you're doing it every day, but then you're getting the effect versus you just do it for one day. Yeah, plants are more regulating and resetting to the nervous system. So, I mean, a lot of studies show to you, I mean, they take a month to really start to feel the effects where a drug would be quite a bit different. So, um, we also are going to use this for any kind we have this. Ready? Tremor, tick, twitch, eye twitches, right? Hand twitches, legs twitch. Um Passion flower is also one of our main antispasmodics, meaning muscle relaxing. So this is one of our main muscle pain, muscle tension, restless leg syndrome, which can be really challenging for some people, um, or just chronic muscle pain, fibromyalgia, muscle pain and aches. And we also use this for nerve pain of any kind, no matter where the nerve pain is at. You've had surgery, you have nerve pain from something they did or a nerve they cut or irritated, right? You have nerve pain in your hands or feet or eye or pelvic floor, wherever it is. It's just a great nerve pain, nerve inflammation herb. One of the classics. Um, we also use this for all drug withdrawal. So this includes alcohol withdrawal, meth withdrawal, nicotine withdrawal, any kind of withdrawal process, getting off of antidepressants, withdrawing from anxiety medications, withdrawing from benzos, sleeping pills, any of any kind of drug withdrawal, whether it's a recreational drug or a prescription drug, we, this is what we're going to use. Okay. And uh, you'd be surprised at how helpful it is. Also, opiate withdrawal, the main herbs. And we use this for all addictions. Food addiction, everything. Just all addictions. Drug addiction, everything. It just depends on the person. Sometimes like as they're withdrawing, we'll do like a higher amount, like maybe 60 drops of a tincture four or even more times a day. Or some people just respond to small, consistent doses, like that little 10 drop dose is really nice for more sensitive types. So sometimes we'll just do 10 drops every couple hours. So does it just help with the cravings, or does it actually mitigate the side effects that happen from withdrawal, like pain, Both. sweating? It does help minimize. Yeah, I mean, I've even seen people addicted to some pretty, I mean, pretty hardcore. I, I people where I've kind of said, I, I don't know if you're ready to do that. I mean, obviously they were ready to, and that's good. But I was like, I don't know if your body is ready for that. Um, yeah, I can just think of this client who has severe PTSD from the Gulf War. He's a vet, um, super nice guy. Um, he just worked off like every addictive, including opiates, every, he just did it like in a course of like three months. And I was like, damn, like that's unusual. That's very dangerous just psychologically because people can slip. Um, but he had a really good support system. His psychiatrist was somewhat on, on board with this and he just went for it. And yeah, it was, it was amazing. I didn't think he could do it, honestly. But he did. It was amazing. Yeah, he withdrew from uh, sleeping pills, anxiety medications, and pretty heavy-duty opiate addiction. And he just, like, went through it. So I don't like people to do, a, like, you know, slow and steady is always better for addictions. Did you get an action? 
Passion flower is one of the things we did, yeah. But he also has chronic, like, severe pain. I mean, he's in, like, severe pain from war injuries and things. I mean, he's got a lot going on. So we use this, yeah, all drug withdrawal. And it does just make the process smoother than you would think as far as, like, the withdrawal process, like the moodiness, anxiety, panic attacks, muscle tension, sweats, chills, kind of queasiness. It all is just kind of reduced quite a bit when we do things like passion flower. Do the nervines repair the nerves? Nervines do repair the entire nervous system and reset it and they do they are good for nerve damage and that too. Yeah, usually for nerve damage, we'll combine this with skull cap and passion flower. Okay, because this is antispasmodic, this is oddly one of the great quirky hiccup remedies for people that have like medical hiccups where they can't stop for years. Um, usually for hiccups, we do digestive herbs, right? Like fennel and chamomile. So this one is would be more for like what we call medical hiccups where people just can never stop ever. Bunch of case studies around the nation of people resolving people's chronic hiccups from just passion flower, straight passion flower. Um, we're also gonna use this for headaches when there's a lot of muscle tension or stress-induced headaches. Like I said, it's really good for kids too. Um, for the heart, we're gonna use this for, we said racing heartbeat, heart palpitations, and it does lower blood pressure a little bit, not dramatically. Was like this and linden for heart palpitations? Uh, it combines really well with linden, for heart palpitations. So in Europe, um, passion flower combined with Hawthorne is an approved drug for heart palpitation patterns. Um, in Europe, parts of Europe, passion flower combined with lemon balm is an approved drug for insomnia and anxiety. Um, sometimes they'll also be combined with valerian for insomnia. But uh, passion flower is more likely to work actually than valerian. Um, it's also historic, although I don't think of it this way, it's also historically used for a lot of nerve gynecology complaints, like severe menstrual cramps and pains. But usually, when there's like fibroids and cysts and all the nerves are irritated and agitated pelvic floor, nerve pains. This is used a lot too. Okay. Um, so it was actually brought to Europe from the Aztecs, as far as we know originally. Um, it's a historical um, commercial crop for its fruit in parts of the southeast of America, like in the south. So there are farms and things for it. Okay, let me look at one other source here too. Oh, in the old days, this was also used to treat tetanus before they had a things for that. What? Tetanus. All right, where you lock up. I mean, now we get tetanus shots and things like that, right? It's not very common anymore, but in the old days, it was pretty bad. I mean, tetanus is, right, your whole body just contracts and you can't move. They used to help people with herbs and that, but I think it took a long time. Yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, I have in my notes too, this is really good for, this is like a traditional herbal nerdy thing. Very good for us stenic patients, meaning very fragile, weaker constitutions. Meaning it's like a gentle nervine. We don't have to worry about it doing anything. So in the, in the old days, they called this... Um, 
a steenic or steenic. So a steenic is without strength or without tone. So a lot of old herb books will talk about this herb is a good herb for like a steenic people, meaning like weaker, fragile types or steenic, like really robust, really strong body types. You know, people that say, oh, I take passion flower by the gallon a day and it doesn't do anything. You know, that would be like a steenic type or somebody that never gets sick. But some people, most of the people we see are going to be a steenic or very sensitive, a little more reactive. Okay. Very safe, even in very high doses. It's just known to be a very, very, very safe plant. Okay? Okay. Everyone's okay with passion flower? It's one of those herbs that's pretty narrow. It all goes down the nerve line, right? We don't use it for a lot of other things. So it's kind of unusual. It's oddly hard to kind of get. It's not... I mean, it might be hard to walk into a health food store and just find a tincture or a capsule of it all by itself without a bunch of other stuff added to it. It's just, it should be really common, but for some reason it's not. We can only find one company that makes it in just a plain capsule. I don't know anything about the fruit. I'm not sure. don't know about that. Okay, done with that one.